advisory committee. It is 7.05 on July the 8th. Uh, announcements, open session, public comments. Uh, the one announcement I have is that Alice has tendered her resignation, effective yesterday. And I sent Alice a note thanking her for her service to the committee and to the town. Does anybody else have any announcements? Nope. Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the approval of the minutes for the last meeting, June 8th. And I believe Alice sent uh, them out to everybody. Did everybody have a chance to review them? Yes, I did. Yes, yep. Okay. All right. Are there any uh, comments or amendments offered? Yeah. Okay. Hearing none, do we have a motion? I move that we accept the. Okay. Don? Okay. I'll second. And Walter will second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Am I the only one that doesn't see Joe? No. Uh, yeah. No, we all don't see Joe. Joe. I'm in an undisclosed location here. <laughs> oh. You're at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish all of us were. Okay. Um, moving down the agenda, Harbor Master Report. Will, would you like to fill us in on your report? Sure. Um, it's been busy. We've been very busy uh, working on uh, um, a lot of 911 calls coming in over the weekend, obviously. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, lost kayakers. Kayakers can't get back in their boats. Boats being uh, uh, taken on water on Jeremy's. Um, boats lighting off flares at night. It's uh, it's been a busy few weeks. Um, most of the harbor has been up and running. We found it pretty chaotic. It's not just the normal um, weekends. Um, anytime the sun comes out, we get pretty busy. But the harbor itself has been um, kind of inundated with people all over the place. Um, so it, it adds to the chaos down there. Um, not necessarily all of it are ours, but it does require a lot of work because most of them stop by to have questions, um, especially questions about where to find their beach stickers. That's a big one during the day. Um, Make a sign. There was, yeah, there was one. Oh, uh, there was one over there, but it wasn't liked or approved or I, I don't know the history of that, but it was taken down. Hmm. And, uh, now, if anyone's been over there for longer than 10 minutes, they've seen us answer about five people worth of questions, which is hard when you're down on the docks or something like that and you see people waiting at the building. So you run up and then they ask where the beach sticker office is. Um, but uh, other than that, um, you know, I think everything is functioning. Everything's running. Everything's good. Um, you know, we're, we're, we are short staffed, I feel. I feel we could use another four people. Um, but other than that, the computers have been up and down. Uh, yesterday I was on a long call with the, the tech and the latest update is what we're going to find out about is, um, upgrading the data service, um, uh, seeing what we can do. They're going to bring in their guy. I guess he's on vacation this week that, that deals with uh, data service. If any of you have gotten fuel over there, you know how much our computers go down. Uh, Dave's pretty, Dave's pretty uh, knowledgeable about how much our computers go down. Um, and it happens a lot. And, and the data over at the fuel shed comes from wireless from the beach sticker office, which gets sent wireless to the water tower, to the fire station. Our building is wireless from uh, the fire tower, uh, the water tower to the fire station as well. Anyway, it, it, it adds a great amount of lag um, to everything. That's one of our bigger problems right now is the computer system. And obviously, as you know, the computer system is how we collect money. And if we can't collect money well, it becomes a problem. Um, so we've looked in, we're starting to look into some upgrades to that to see what we can do. 
we'll have to spend a little bit of money, but you know, sometimes you got to spend money to make money. Um, My wife says that all the time, Will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good at that, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're good at that. <laughs> Would that have? Uh, any... oh, yeah. Never mind. So uh, uh, we're looking at we're looking at a couple different options, basically, with that. We're looking at um, maybe we can get uh, new systems or pay for an upgraded uh, upload system. We're running about, I, I checked it the other day, yesterday, we checked. We're downloading at 20 and uploading at about 40, which is backwards. Uh, we should be doing it the opposite way. Um, then later on in the day, we checked it, both numbers were at 20. That's slow. That's really slow. Um, and for all of our networks to be constantly communicating with each other in between buildings and going through the system, that's not good. Um, I know our credit card machines aren't live all the time, but it's an old school system and there is a lot of data required. So if we're running low on data, they're not gonna work. Which, so during a peak time at the marina with a lot of people using service all around there, uh, you know, Wi-Fi service and things like that, that's going to bog down the service. So we could do it that option. Or we could also look into getting a, another uh, system like you'd see at a farmer's market or something where you swipe a credit card uh, on your cell phone and just have a dedicated cell phone for transactions with the credit card system. Because we get, as you all know, we get awesome wireless at, at the harbor. That the, the Verizon wireless service is great. I, I don't have a problem even going out on the water with that. So uh, that's one of our biggest things right now is trying to get the computers up and, you know, functioning all the time because they're not hardwired. So uh, another thing, um, you know, just more maintenance. We're doing a lot more maintenance. We're trying. Uh, the boat needs to be looked at. You know, that's going to be an upcoming topic. And, uh, you know, the, the boat is, the boat is old. The rescue boat's old. Um, I fried a few fuses this weekend. I've had to have a handheld portable uh, VHF to talk to the Coast Guard um, because the, the, it's a brand new radio. I put a brand new radio in it about a year ago, but you know, it keeps getting fried. Um, Bay sales has given us a, you know, don't spend any more money on the motor on that boat. It's, that's the rescue boat for the town. And, and it's old. So, you know, that's going to be coming down the pike. So other than that, I think uh, that's where we're at. Thank you. Um, now, after the last uh, Marina meeting, um, Will voiced his objections to me regarding issues that we raised at the last meeting. And I've been requested by members to give Will the opportunity to give us his thoughts about that. Well, well, most of my thoughts about that is, is we can't do anything about the past. So we need to let go of it. We need to move forward. We need to keep on going and make this harbor better. We need to make everything function better, run better, operate better, and work better. I think uh, more can be done on with everyone, everyone involved to come together to make this better. But I think continually harping on the past is, uh, is not gonna do anything for anyone. So that's all I have to say. And mm -hmm. if, um, you know, I'd like to move forward here and uh, make everything better. What can, yeah. we, what can we do to help um, you make everything better, Will? Um, that I'm trying to figure out each person's niche and, and how they can, um, you know, how, the, how they can help the harbor, uh, how they can help the marina to, to function a little better. A lot of it is, you know, a lot of it is telling me things that you see, you know. Um, if, then, if, we you know you, if, if we tell you things that we see or if we, um, let me see how I can put this. If, if we want to try to maybe help you institute some new things, is that going to be accepted okay? Um, 
You know, and I'm Definitely. just thinking of something simple. I'm thinking like right now you were mentioning, you know, everybody wants to know where the beach sticker office is. You know, is there like a bulletin board and, and some nice signage that maybe some of us could help you with that would say that, you know, so you wouldn't have to answer the question all the time. You know, that's just an example. Yeah, yeah. All, all those kind of things are well accepted. And uh, there was a, a sign over at the beach sticker office on the side of the building, which I think should, I don't know where it went, but it should probably come back. Um, a giant sign on the gable end of the building would be good because as you come down Commercial Street, uh, you'd, you'd see that. And that would take a lot less uh, activity for our staff to answer those questions. Not, not that we don't want to see the people, but, you know, um, having 10 extra people there looking for beach stickers is, is time. You know, and you run up from doing one thing to the next. So, yeah, things like that are, are great. And if, if anyone wants to work on those avenues, um, and the, that the would be awesome. You were mentioning being, you know, like, you know, short-staffed. Um, is and I'm I'm un, forgive me if I'm unfamiliar of how you're doing this, but you know, do you identify some of the times that you really need some people? Like I mean, like I know the weekend was terribly busy, and I I witnessed the chaos down there. You know, like on Saturday and Sunday afternoon when everybody was trying to take their boat out of the water. Is that a time when there could possibly you know be a few more people staff wise? Yes. Yep. That, that definitely is a time period. Um, Saturday, most of all. Um, you, you know, I, I've switched it back to have all the younger guys running around on the weekend um, to add more bodies. Uh, there was some slight schedule changes to make up for the weekdays. Um, and we've kind of, that kind of didn't work. So, you know, constantly adapting, I think, is the key. And so we we put more people back on on the weekends, um, which is should should help out with that. This weekend was obviously a little hectic and chaotic, uh, but most weekends are, most of them are, you know they're pretty crazy. And that's when the majority of people come. That's when we had all the parking issues. That's when we have all the usage issues. That's usually when we have all the rescues. I mean. Saturday, Friday night, we had 911 calls. Saturday night, we had multiple 911 calls. Sunday afternoon, we had 911 calls. It was... Uh, yeah, what was going on down there Friday night when the uh, fire department was there with a the little inflatable? Um, yeah, so that's an interesting one. Um, what happened was there was a 911 call came in that there were five to six kids on a boat over by Great Island. And the boat was taking on water and riding low. Uh, the kids had no PFDs on. Um, <laughs> let me let me look it up real quick here, and I'll tell you exactly how the message came in. Um, I, ha I I get a text from Barnstable County, uh, the sheriff's office, which is the dispatch system. Um, so. All right, so that came in, 855 requested neck road, a white whaler, kids possibly in distress, one is out of the boat now, no PFDs, five to six kids, boat riding low. Describes as right off the Great Island sandbar, north of the sandbar, okay? Now, I got that, that text message at 7.04 on Friday. Uh, I, I, was, I was actually having a couple beers, uh, down in East Ham with a friend. So I called Dave, who was there getting ready to close up shop as we closed at eight o'clock. You know, he was doing his round. So I made sure to call the guys because obviously I wasn't responding to that one. Um, and he went out on the boat to go check out the situation. Now, at 7.09, the fire department left a message on the answering machine saying that they were already launched they had already launched their zodiac at powers landing and there was there was no distress okay now in the five minutes that i get the call from the sheriff the fire department's already launching a zodiac at the beach the guys watched the fire department 
drive by the harbor, seeing ambulances, things like that, not thinking it was a call for us because they didn't call until they got to Powers Landing and already had launched the boats. So the situation ended good, okay? The situation ended great. No one was hurt, no one was in trouble. But I gotta tell you, a five minute lag, it had to be more than that. Because if they had already come down, hooked up their boat at the fire department and launched it at Powers Landing and knew that people weren't in trouble, if there was five to six kids in trouble, by the time they had that stuff there, we could have been there. And if the kids were in trouble, they would have really been in trouble. Well, and, and at, the, at the same time, I mean, I, I, I noticed it because I, I went down on my boat then and I sat down on my boat until like well after dark when they were gone. But I don't know if you're aware of this. Somebody uh, shot off some major fireworks from over on the beach by Camp Marvin. And I, wow. I, was, glad, I was glad I was on my boat. I, I thought a couple of them were going to reach some of the boats on the very end there. They never did. And it was a fairly short display. But Yeah, we had, we, we had a few on, on Jeremy's point on um, Saturday night. The first 911 call I came to at about 8 o'clock, um, 9 o'clock, <laughs> was a boat, 35-foot boat that someone uh, put on Jeremy's point was taken on water. Obviously, it was a keel boat, inboard engines, listing over. Um, you know, anyway, we solved that problem um, by his, uh, you know, by his uh, turning and getting his engine on. Luckily, his batteries worked or else that boat probably wouldn't have come up. But, uh, you know, he beached it. You know, and as you know, you don't, you don't beach a boat like that. Um, when they list, they take on water in one scupper and they fill up underneath the deck before they... Uh, and everyone keeps waiting for them to pop back up, but they don't. So luckily we had that problem solved. We got back in, I left, was on my way home when I got another one. And that was someone lighting off flares in Northeast Ham, distress flares. So I met the fire department back down there. Um, that was right before the fireworks show, which was at, I think, 9.30. Yeah, right about then. It was about 9.30, they had a fireworks show out there all over the place. There was fireworks lighting up the entire bay. But um, Well, that one up at Camp Marvin was early, and then I came yeah. home, and for about an hour, there was, Flip was probably shooting them off over there on Chiquesset. I missed right? all that stuff. I was over there, actually, but Chiquesset. Yeah. I was, I was, I, how did you know that? You got, you got well, Snapchat? That went on for hours. <laughs> yeah, that was a, I heard that a was lot of quite, stuff, but I didn't see anything up here. That was quite the show out there. But anyway, yeah, right so along, uh, people, Powers Landing, it was people were lighting up flares. Sure. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you. Getting back to that distress with the kids, um, did the fire the fire department central dispatch? They don't make contact with you guys when like the fire department's on the way to something like this. They're supposed to. Okay. They're supposed to. Um, you know, as you know, Dave. Uh, 911 ones come in, you hear them on the radio normally in the station, but also uh, they call. You know, someone from the dispatch, county dispatch, does the cell phone 911 or the state police and they call. And yep. so, whoever answers that phone should be calling us immediately, exactly. especially if it's on the water. There yep. shouldn't be, there is absolutely no reason that they should be launching a boat before we even know about it. Oh, 100 percent. That's you know, that's what I kind of got out of that. It didn't seem like you guys were really in the loop. No. Uh, are no. you going to send like a memo or something out to everybody that was involved that that should be the protocol in the future? So I hope to have a meeting with the, the fire chief and the lieutenant exactly. about that. Um, finding out and making just, you know, putting it in a positive light to make sure that as soon as they know before they leave that building to call us because I've, I've seen it multiple times where they show up before I even know what's going on. And for the time that they can get to the Harbor, we can be ready, mm. you know, and, and granted if we're taking paramedics out or something like that, we will wait for them if needed, but we could be ready. That boat could be running. The engine could be down. The electronics could be on, you know, everyone could be ready to go. And if we have a five minute head start, that, that could save someone's life. Yeah, so you are gonna have a meeting with the fire department and the police department? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's yes. great. Yeah. It's a pretty good argument for more than one boat, too, Will. Yeah. Exactly. So that, um, there are two, but only one works. Yeah, they need they need at least two down there. Yeah, I had to take out the, the guys. I came from home, obviously, with the, the sinking boat call. Um, Jamie was there at the harbor. Um, he took out the fire department with him. Um, and then I had to take out the skiff, which the skiff is – it's not very fast to get out there, but um, you know, I, again, I I was just whole, I was just lucky that the boat ran, you know, and yeah, we need we need a good boat, we need a nice boat, we need a bigger boat. Well, see, I, I have a question related to that. Mm -hmm. Um, a while back, I think it was two or three years ago, we came into possession of, uh, I think there was some kind of surplus boats. One of them has a diesel inboard, outboard. Whatever, be whatever became of those? I know that there was a boat well before that, that we got that had a gas inboard or inboard, outboard, something like that, that was sold off. Um, I don't know of any other boat. Yeah, Mac McCartland has one of them. Yeah, that's the one I know of. Yeah. You know, there, there was another one that had a diesel outdrive. Uh, it was either a Yanmar or a Volvo. I don't remember which. But uh, it sat up there on blocks for a while. And it was, I think it was an aluminum hull. Yeah, they yeah, both. That was probably Matt's. And that was gas. You no, know, there was definitely a I, – I looked at the engine on one of them, and it was diesel. And I just wondered what became that of it. That might have been before Will was here. That was a while oh, ago. That, that's possible, yeah. I, I remember amazing. the boat you're talking about, but I think that was before Will was here. Yeah. Well, what did we sell that off? Yeah. Yeah, they they auctioned them both off. Not uh, a very practical. That's not a very practical boat for doing rescues or anything no, in the could, harbor. Could have been a good really? work boat. Oh, well, good work boat for sure. But yeah. I mean, you got to have an outboard. It's just so much more practical when they're pulling into all these little nooks and crannies. You can't be going in there with an inboard. Yeah, you got to have yeah, no, it. Yeah, it was an outdrive. You know, you can kick them up. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should, Electrolysis. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I know um, preferably what I would prefer is about a 25 foot center console with, with twin engines, outboards. You know, I think that would be the most ideal boat for this harbor. Um, pull them up and be able to skid right in on, on the land if you needed to. <clears throat> or get in any creek. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, not, a, not a real deep V, so you could get into the shallow. Stuff. Exactly. Yep. Something, something fast. Now, I have a, a, a comment just that maybe we should put this into the minutes that, you know, he's, he's having trouble connecting with the fire department and that the selectmen should make sure that, you know, uh, these things get connected. Because like Will said, they got the boats in the water. They're ready to go. They don't have to hook them up. They should be, you know, they should be notified, and maybe we should, should be communicating that so that uh, yeah. can have an idea. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I agree with that. I think that there should be a specific mention, uh, you know, in the minutes that that we are all are all in agreement that there needs to be some protocol with the. Uh, notification of the harbor master, you know, once the police or fire department are notified of anything. And I also think we ought to note in the minutes that, you know, with the increased usage of the harbor and the proposed increased usage of the harbor with the dredging, that it's really time to look at some new boats for the harbor master's office. Now that's the kind of thing you can get grants for, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, well yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think you know, the, 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 it was, I'm starting to see a plan take shape that, uh, you know, we need more boats and we need more people. I remember I raised the issue of, uh, last year sometime about uh, enforcement of things like speed regulations. And, and one of the problems with that is we don't have enough people and, uh, oh, uh, or enough boats. Yeah. One of the things I've been thinking about recently is not right now, obviously, but uh, in the fall, we should obviously have a meeting, hopefully, all together in person and discuss a plan, you know, some kind of a program where we can implement some of these ideas and, and present them, A, to the selectmen and B, to the uh, town assistant uh, town administrator who knows how to do this stuff. You know, now it's, it's, it's a little too crazy to concentrate on this stuff. But I think when things slow down, we should definitely uh, start thinking about a, a plan for, uh, for action down there. 
How do you feel about that? Future Will? plan. How do you feel about Walter's suggestion? I, I like that a lot. I, I think um, uh, Mike Tra Travato, the assistant town administrator, and I have talked about working on, on uh, multiple plans for the marina, you know, uh, infrastructure upgrades. Um, I know, you know, here with the marina advisory, we've talked about maintenance uh, plans, um, but we also need plans for replacements of things. Uh, replace replacement plans. So we need several plans going on, and I think with the help of you guys um, and, and and girls, that we could come up with multiple plans of action to renew everything that we have, because anything that we have is either going to need to be maintained, upgraded, or replaced. Correct. And that's going to be a lot of money going forward, and we're already spending a lot of money fuel tanks, uh, dredging, you know, there's a ton of money and, and, you know, people aren't going to like us constantly going all willy nilly about money. But if we had a plan for replacement of things or upgrading things or maintaining things, you know, and showing that there's a need for things, I, I think that's a lot better way to go forward. Absolutely. Is there in your budget, is there any amortization account for, you know, like new vehicles and new boats? Only what we put in there, okay. Which hasn't happened. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe something like that should be added. You know. Yeah, the the, the harbor has been running a shoestring and a prayer for quite a long time, and uh, you know it, it it shows it. And, and I think now that we have some new blood coming in here, maybe we can uh, get some plans going and you know look for grants and and explain to the people in charge that, hey, this is what's happening down here. This is a, you know, how many rescues did you have this weekend? Five, six, seven, you know? Yeah. And they yeah. all came out good, but no guarantees, you know? Well, more than just the well, rescues. I mean, within five minutes the other afternoon, I, I think it was Sunday afternoon, I watched some guy back his boat trailer into that post that's like, you know, right next to the launch. Uh -huh. And... <laughs> There were about like 10 boats on the ramp. And then there was a couple in a sailboat that got over against the rocks and they couldn't get it off. And there was somebody on the pier throwing them a line. And there were two people crawling down the rocks to get them. <laughs> it was, and yeah. uh, if, if you dredge, they will come. Yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> they, well, they, well, will be, they will be coming. They will well, be coming. And it's only going to get become more. Well, they're here now because it's social distancing to be out in a boat, you know, <laughs> to the beaches. Hey. Hey. Well, the, um, how does the number, well, yeah. how does the number of summer help you have now compare with the number you had last summer? Is it less? I I think we might be down uh, uh, one body for summer help. Uh -huh. um, you know, we had we had a couple people, you know, like we had Bob Gross in the beginning of the year, but then, you know, later on he left. I believe that was last year. Um, yeah. You know, but we got another uh, older part-timer. Um, we had one other guy full-time that left after Labor Day. So I think we're down one. We're down basically one part-time body or seasonal body, and we're down yeah. one full-time body. So, uh, they can, I can see you go out of the room. And, and I do believe that eat, so. we need more than we've had anyway. At, at the rate that we pay people, you know, between 15 and $18 an hour for part-time, which has been boosted. Uh, Dan Hort allowed us to bring that up to 18, which previously wasn't that high. But getting more of them would be great. But as you know, everyone has a problem getting seasonal staff on Cape Cod and, and almost anywhere now. It's almost going to be an issue of full-time staff because that's the only way to get someone committed. Now we could have 10 guys part-time and it wouldn't really put a dent in any budget at 15 or $18 an hour. 
that wouldn't really make much, but the people aren't there to take those jobs. And that's the real problem with seasonal help. Does anybody have any other questions or concerns? Well, I think in connection with that, um, wouldn't it make more sense instead of, you know, just, I know it's, we're talking theory here, but you know, instead of 10 people part-time, uh, making it attractive to hire five people full-time uh, year round, because the, the ongoing maintenance, th this is part of the problem is maintenance. And that takes people, not only people, but people who have some idea of what they're doing, um, you know, taking care of the plumbing issues on the floats and the, you know, the, those electrical lines drooping in the water and stuff like that. Um, I'd, I'd rather see us spend more money to get people that, you know, have some skills uh, along those lines. I, I, I don't, how do you feel about that, Will? Do, I mean, you, you, you know what you're dealing with. I, I don't. So I'm on a, I'm with you on that. And, and you know, one thing that resonates with me when we did have VH from GEI engineering come down and, and just take a gander at our Marina, he asked about our numbers and, and what we do. And he looked at us and said, you should be doubling that. This Marina is, is double that. And there, and we also are, our budget is funded by the revenues of the Marina. So I think that would lead into a good progression of one having a bookkeeper two starting off at some point getting two assistant harbor masters full-time i think to have one harbor master two assistants and a bookkeeper would be profound in, in the amount that we could get done at the harbor and that would realistically even if the bookkeeper was only part-time or shared with another department you know, I, I also know that the selfish department's looking at a shared bookkeeper. Um, that kind of person would be significant as they would take me off of consistently doing bookkeeping and receipts and, and minor things like that that take a lot of time and put me back into the harbor um, or any other harbor master. And as well as an extra assistant would grab someone that would have to be committed to the harbor year round with the skills. So that would be mean more than just one person and a, a few guys for the summer, even though they're doing great, but some full-time help is, is really where it's at. And that's how you get people committed is by committing to them. Well, and then if you had the full-time help too in the summertime on busy weekends, if there were three full-time people you know, like doing swing shifts, you'd, you'd always have a full-time person on duty. And you could know, have a couple part-timers on the weekends to help out too. Yeah, and then the, to oversee the part-time people. Yeah, right. And that's going to be the about... only way to keep any kind of staff on Cape Cod going forward is to give them a year-round job. And if we can afford it with the marina revenues to pay them, then it, it shouldn't, you know, everything should balance out because we are an enterprise fund and, and that's how we're supposed to be operating is making the money and putting it back into the harbor. So if, if that was partly personnel, maybe some of the maintenance all year round could be done by these full-time helpers. You know, we can talk in circles around this, you know, like forever. I think what we need to do is, is devise a, an actual plan. You know, maybe, you know, maybe we'll come up with a plan. Maybe we can help assist with it. And then we should, uh, you know, put our stamp of approval on it to be sent to the, the Board of Selectmen and to the, the town administrator. Yeah, you know, that, we, that, we, need to, we need to have something specific other than just keep talking about it, you know? Right. Right, but I don't think anything can happen till the end of the summer because he's going crazy down there. Oh, absolutely. On the weekends. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking about that should be a part of the, if we do hire people, is training. They got to have some training. They got to know what they're doing, why they're doing it. Yeah. That's one of the things that has been lax in the past. Nobody's gotten any training. They just say, here you go. You got a job down the harbor. Go ahead and do it. 
there's stuff that you have to be trained for. You know, the, yeah. the rescue stuff, you should have training for that. Yeah, I mean, are the people that are down there part time, I, I don't, are they certified in CPR and first aid? <laughs> uh, two of them are. The, my, my main shift guys. So right now, I try to keep it to myself, uh, Dave Perry, and J Jamie Johnson on every shift. And yes, we are all uh, CPR, first aid, yeah. ED, AD, sorry, certified, um, okay. and, and uh, Narcan as well. Um, the three of us are, and I try to make sure that on every shift, uh, one of us is on it. Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. Well, I don't see why, any, why we on the committee need to wait till the end of the summer to help, you know, put some ideas together in a visible yeah, form could, that- uh, That could be done for sure, but he's the guy I, that got- I'd be there. happy to devote some time to that. And then we can circulate it around by email and see what people think of it. Yeah, well, everybody could come up with a list and we could put them together. Yeah. Any other thoughts by anybody? Why don't, why don't we each come up with a list and we'll give it to Will and then maybe, you know, a couple people can meet with Will and we can go over it and fine tune it and have something developed that we can present. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Well, g given that, um, the great minds often think alike. Um, maybe it would be easier if each of us in the committee came up with a list and brought it to the table uh, the next time and, and combine it into uh, a list uh, and then work with Will on it. Might that be easier? Mm -hmm. At the next meeting? Yeah. Bring your thoughts to the table. That makes we'll, sense. we'll work together, produce a final list yeah, yeah. Uh, for Will to have. And then in the fall, you can, he could develop, you know, some kind of relationship with the assistant town administrator to get get going on some of this. You know, we we get the ideas up, and something has to be. You know, we're an advisory committee; we have limits. Mm -hmm. But you know, once we have a a presentation, basically a a, a program, then we can make progress on, on, on what you said, on, on things that need to be done. Well, one thing I think that we ought to do that maybe we could engineer is when the new town administrator gets here, you know, perhaps we could arrange to take her on a tour of the whole harbor, you know, yeah. both physically walking, but also out on a boat, you know, and, and show her all the different parts of the harbor and what we're talking about in terms of the dredging from the water standpoint and you know, and where people get in trouble, and where they don't, and where the grants are, so she could actually physically see it. See the slips, see idea, the borings, Martha. everything. Yeah, a great yeah. idea. All right, Martha, your vote. Lock her in the men's room for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be happy to volunteer mine if, if she doesn't yeah, mind. I'd be happy to volunteer time. mine. I mean, you know, I'm sure Dave would. I mean, we could, you know, yeah. we could give her a. I mean, I think that would go a long way from for having her understand it instead of like just, you know, reading about it on paper, but right. to, to visually be able to put it together, I think it would go a long way. She's a boater, right? Who? The new, the new, the new, the new TA? Yeah. Did they pick one? Yeah, I don't know. Maria yeah, Brock, the woman. Maryland. She's got oh, some kind of boating Maryland. background. Yeah. Used to work at the seashore years ago as a guy. She was when she was in Annapolis. I would assume she's been on a boat. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Any other when thought? Is, when is she supposed to start, do you know? Any uh, other August thoughts? August first, I believe. Oh. Okay. Yes, oh. August first. You know, um, Walter, you had mentioned that there's grants out there for, for boats and, and stuff, you know, to purchase boats. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm struggling a little bit with the the idea of why the town isn't buying us a boat. Why the town the town buys police cruisers? They mm. settle in their budget. Why mm. can't the town settle in their budget to buy a boat? Mm. A boat is a vehicle that's necessary for getting the job done, saving lives. It's it's an essential part of Will's job. Mm. Why can't the town put it in their budget to pay for a boat. I mean, it's not that big of an expense in the long run when you think about what it can do for us. I think one, the, the first thing the town would respond <clears throat> with 
is is there sufficient money in the marina's enterprise yeah to pay that's, for what, it? that's what they're going to say what about the enterprise yeah, yeah. yeah well mm -hmm. they always fall back on the enterprise fund but you know sometimes they need to pony up a little bit i think on some of the essentials this is a this is Safety. an essential tool this isn't something that you know we can do without you know i mean this isn't something that we have to manufacture more ideas to, to rev for revenue for the uh, enterprise fund to be able to pay for it. I think that the taxpayer should want to pay for a boat so that Will can effectively do that. It's for safety reasons. I agree with another, another, uh, John? Another, another point is that should somebody get in trouble out there and the uh, uh, harbor to be unable to reach them because the boat broke down or something like that, wouldn't that uh, put the town in a bad position liability-wise? Of course it would. I would yeah, so that's another good reason that the town should pony up. Flip, did you have a thought? Uh, well, I think there's a, once you leave uh, the dock, it's not really the town's li liabilities kind of out the window. When you when you're on the water, but yes, is it in terms of being, you know, a, a proper town and being on top of things, you do need one or two good boats so that you can go and have that opportunity to save people for sure. It's a no-brainer. I don't think we're required, but I think that it's definitely something we should have. No, I think. Well, a boat like Will's talking about is probably 125, 150 grand. I mean, you're not talking 30 or 40 thousand dollars here. You're talking pretty good money. Now, maybe you know a grant might be 50, 50 or something, and maybe the town could pony up with half the money. But I think grants should be researched and see how, oh, sure. how oh, you know well, what the split agree. would be. If we got to put up 50 grand and they'll put up 100, exactly. You know, that's, that's a win. That's reasonable, you know. That would be pretty reasonable. It'll lighten the burden on the taxpayers. Right. I think exactly. the way you the but way that you have present a stake in it too, you know, make them have a little something in the game. Right. The way you present it to the select board is is the way that you get what you want. I mean, and and I think if you come in as a safety issue, uh, you know, a, a, it's like a fire truck. That's it's like a fire truck. It's like something that you really need. You should have, you know. Um, and uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. The Coast Guard won't come in here. It's too shallow for them. Exactly. The they, and they, they got to they come what from Providence Town. Yeah. One of the things that um, we lobbied for on the dredging committee to secure the federal funding for the channel was the fact that the town is in an agreement with the Coast Guard sector in Providence Town and is responsible for rescue operations. The Coast Guard depends upon the town to do their part of the rescue operation. And, you know, we harped on the, the, the matter of dredging. The lack of it doesn't allow us to do that. But we also don't want to be in a position of not having the vehicle to do it uh, when the tide is high and when we have dredging. Any other thoughts? But I'd also like to say we are, along with Dennis, um, Harbor Master, and the Coast Guard, almost the sole source of rescue for this entire half of the bay. Right. So East Ham, New Orleans aren't aren't coming right. most of the time. Um, right. So we're meeting Dennis halfway and the Coast Guard. Uh, you know, so. There's got to be some state funding or something available for that kind of thing. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Especially when we have water under us. It, it'll yeah. be really, um, you know, night and day. Uh, you know, we're, we're already getting called on more and more by the Coast Guard to help out. Well, is, is this um, kind of funding something that the assistant town manager can research? You know, since, you know, he's a water person and he's also into, I think, some, you know, grant writing. Well, that's why I recruited him and got permission to use him. He has wrote, written numerous uh, grants for marina issues and was involved in the redesign of the marina in Hyannis. 
Um, and I, I really, I, I, I think we should utilize him as much as possible. So he should be pretty knowledgeable on what's out there and where to go for, you know, some of the grants. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I just I have one last question for Will. Um, this gets back to the early part of the discussion about the uh, data setup. Uh, is it safe to assume that, that pr the problems you're having with that would be responsible for the weather station going offline? Every time we have to reboot the computer, the weather station goes offline. So, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's all I wanted to I have no okay. further questions. All right. Um, the item on the agenda is marina usage during the pandemic. Who would like to start off? Um, well, are, are, are you observing um, changes along the lines of what concerned previously about Ubers going to the beach and so forth? Um, the parking lot change that I've seen is the minute the sun comes out, the parking lot fills up. I don't know necessarily that they're going where they're going to the beach or anything like that, but I know that they're walking around, they're using it, they're there, they're at max, they're eating anywhere they can. I mean, all the benches are full now with people eating and walking and I think more so than the past because people are trying to get their distance and, and kind of uh, get some food, get, get some, some kind of drink and, and go and be. And we're, we're the perfect setup for that. Um, as far as going to a beach or somewhere distant, I haven't been able to tell that yet. I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. From my observation this past weekend with like Ubers and stuff, the um, parking lot at Cove Corners was pretty full, even on a day when it was cloudy and the funk bus was there parked. So I think they were shuttling people to the beach. Yeah, I, went I, to the pier. I didn't see a funk bus down at the pier. So I think I just saw it at Cove Corners. Now, we've been pretty good at trying to um, deter any kind of buses or anything. Also, if you noticed on Saturday um, and partially on Sunday, we set up the stanchions to keep the um, further end of the, the hard top, the, you know, the boat and trailer section, the parking down there for marina use only. And we stationed a guy out there for most of Saturday um, to try to kind of keep that for boating purposes, which seemed to work up quite a bit. I mean, granted, it was an overcast, cloudy, rainy morning. So I think that helped us on 4th of July. I couldn't have imagined if it was an 85, 90 degree 4th of July, what it would have been like down there. Yeah. But I think things like that on, um, on bigger weekends is certainly going to be uh, the way to go. Um, and any other COVID things, one thing I'm trying to do really hard is kind of reprogram the way that people come in for lunch dockage. I'm trying to keep that, um, especially on the weekends, the, the, the public dock, the pick up and drop off more open. I'm trying to utilize the moorings more. I'm trying to work with Wellfleet Marine, which has been very uh, helpful in this matter to shuttle people back and forth from the moorings. So instead of taking up that limited dock space um, and congregating on there with their boats for their couple hours of uh, restaurant use, to put them on a mooring if we have them free, um, which may mean in the future more moorings, which is fine, we have the room. Um, but I think that's a better program than clogging up the docks with launch dockage especially where we're under the, the COVID guidelines of trying to keep everything a little more free and clear for people to come and go? Well, that's something else we need to think about as an additional revenue producer. You know, an awful lot of these harbors that you go into, if you, you know, are at a mooring and you get a launch service in, you pay money for it. What are we um, charging for somebody who wants to come in for lunch for an hour or two, Will? Ten dollars for two hours. Mm -hmm. That's cheap. I went on, it cheap. I went on the website at Flyers and the P Town Marina recently, 
and it was a good deal higher. So maybe Martha's uh, thought about looking at that in the future is worthwhile. I think when we have water, yeah, but right now. No, no, in the future. Yeah. Um, Joe? Jo? Yes. This is Courtney. Um, Miss Judah Hearn is on and she had her hand raised. Um, oh, she sure. wants to write to Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Jude. Um, a couple of things. Um, the Board of Health, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The Board of Health met this afternoon and talked about the funk bus and the buses dropping people off and they're because there was an incident at Cahoon Hollow and a fight and 60 people had to leave. So they were going to talk to town council and maybe put a moratorium on uh, like the funk bus or buses because of a public health issue. Sounds so good that to me. might be hearing about, um, Martha, I guess you, you said something about the funk bus at Cove Corners. Um, and the other thing I would just say about uh, previously about the money and as just a p member of the public, you know, the, the police and the fire get it because they ask for it, you know, ask for what you want. Explain to the people, as we know, how you did that heroic rescue this winter and, you know, just lay it out there. It's, as you say, um, necessary. And I would just say with any grant comes strings attached. So we should be able to find the money in this town since so many people are using it. It's just how you present it and just be mm -hmm. bold and ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, somebody should also talk to Suzanne Thomas because it was my understanding that, you know, they had sent a letter to all the bus companies, you know, that they, they could no longer drop the people off like they had been. And so I was really surprised when I saw that funk bus there. Probably a different level bus. It's smaller or something. I know they said, I know they sent a letter to Cape Destinations and I don't know, you yeah. know, what other bus company was in, in addition to that, but. I, I would say, um, to to comment on what uh, Jude said, I think um, in, going forward in the future, I think we should constantly be asking for things. You know, knowing that uh, sometimes we won't get them, but if we don't ask, we'll never get them. That's a good point. So, and it takes forever to get what you want. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so two or three times. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which is fine, and it's and it's all part of the program. And there is a need, and a, a need now, a need later. There's a source for that. But if we if we don't ask, if we don't try, then we won't be there. Um, the um, the lobbying we developed to secure the federal funding for um, the Army Corps to dredge the channel. Um, we, we, we did a good deal of work um, around developing a lobbying plan and stating why we should get that funding. Um, and, you know, I'd be happy to pitch in and help out with developing a plan like that. Certainly one part of it that registered with the select board at that time was no one knew that we were under agreement with the Coast Guard and that we were obligated to, to do those rescues or assist in the rescues. Um, I got a message here, Courtney. Um, the request is that you unmute Dave. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Dave, are you back on? Hello. Hi, Dave. Yep. I yeah, can you're hear back me? On. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Um, I, 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 think, I think our prior discussion of, you know, coming up with, you know, each of us contributing to coming up with a plan, I think that goes to some distance towards addressing what uh, Jude raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, we want a coherent presentation to make to the Board of Selectmen and to town meeting, you know, when we're asking for this money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? The information on dredging? Uh, the, the next item, oh, on the uh, dredging is, um, my information is um, July 15th is the end date for bidders 
to submit a bid um, for the contract. And the Army Corps engineer um, told the town recently that um, it'll be awarded within a few days after that. Will, do you have anything else on that? No, I don't, I don't have any further information on that. We're just kind of waiting to hear uh, about, um, you know, their process and, and who, who gets the bid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any uh, questions? Uh, they, they, they had a survey boat down there uh, doing a preliminary, I imagine a preliminary survey for the, you know, yes. for the whole deal. And, yes. Uh, Saw that. Is that done? Yeah, they, they were out there for uh, several days trying out different uh, equipment as well. But that, that was exactly what they were doing and, and getting everything on target. But, you know, and, and uh, I know everyone will kind of hope to have a little more information from them. But it's kind of like they're a third party taking care of their business. And you only find out when it's become public sort of thing, which is a little bit hard to take. But, um, you, you know, they, they are very competent in it. And, uh, you know, they've been along the whole way. So. Uh, I know they're going forward with, with it, and, uh, you know, we just can't wait to hear about who's who's the bidder on the 15th. For, for years on the dredging committee, I've been impressed with the management of the Army Corps, and in particular, um, Craig Martin, the chief engineer. I think he's a straight shooter. Uh, he's a good communicator. He's always been there for us. And uh, we'll see what happens right after the 15th. Any other questions or comments? I sent to all of you um, the part of the final parking task force report submitted to the select board. I was um, directed to write that chapter on the marina. Have you had a chance to read it? Yes, yes, I yep. did. I have it right in front of me. Okay. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. It, it's yeah. the same, same as it always is. You give the report to the selectmen yep. and then <laughs> that's about it. Well, you know, one of, the, um, one of the reasons, the main reason I wanted to be on that parking task force was for the marina to have a voice. And um, it... Um, <laughs> It was an eye opener for me in, in that how little they knew about the marina and the operation of the marina. And if you look at the first paragraph of the report I wrote, where it spells out the charges, that blew them away. I think some people actually thought you made a nominal donation and you were in. Uh, so I wanted them to see how many there were, and, you know, how much we are spending uh, to have a boat to slip a mooring there. Um, but anyway, it's included in there. And as you saw, the final recommendation was get going on working on it because of what I think everybody is in agreement in anticipating um, about the future. Even without dredging now, I know Will's comment about a lot of parking spaces being taken up in the morning. Any, um, any further thoughts on that? Okay. Um, with, with Alice's resignation, um, Dave is listed by the town as an alternate. I thought we had him as a full member in the past, but he's listed as an alternate. So I've been told to um, have a motion to vote and get it on the record that um, he, he will now be a full member and will pay us all the $100 initiation fee. <laughs> And that, that flip will collect. Yeah, yeah, and lobsters only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do we have a motion? Um, uh, yeah. Dave I thought we I thought we did this before, but yeah, I nominate Dave Stamatis to be a full time uh, member of our 
Marine Advisory Committee. Yeah, my man, Flip. Okay. You bet, buddy. I'll second it. And, and who second? I John? did. Martha? Martha? Martha's fine. Martha second. Any discussion? Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Walt, my wife's okay. raising her hand. It's unanimous. <laughs> and we will expect a lobster feast at the next meeting. You got it. <laughs> A um, virtual feast, right? Yeah. Fun, butter included. Virtual, virtual um, feast, yeah. We need to um, do the election of officers um, to move forward. So does somebody, I'm willing to do it for another year. Does somebody want to initiate discussion on that? I nominate Joe for chairman for another year. I'll um, second. Okay, I'm taking the minutes here because I, I have my secretary's hat on as well. So Walter nominates and John second. Okay, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Um, the vice chair, um, Walter has been our vice chair. Walter, are you interested in doing another term? I'm going to let someone else have the fun this time. So, okay. Not, not this time. All right. I nominate Flip. No. No. <laughs> I do not accept the nomination for vice chairs. <laughs> I am going through a very tough time yeah, right like now. You're, you're and if, nom and if, and if nominated, I will not run. Right, Flip? Right. Uh, yeah. Is I'm anyone sure else interested? All right, we yeah, can leave Dave. it open. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking Dave would be a great vice chair. He's no, he's here. I'm too busy. Not in the tough. middle of summer. I, I know summers yeah. are very tough for all of us. Well, we can leave it open for now, and uh, yeah, hopefully strong it. arm a few of you between now and the next meeting, and uh, we'll revisit it then. Um, okay. Any, any new business? Your future concerns that anybody has. No? Okay, looking at the calendar, I see four I weeks. One, I do have one thing. Uh, should we make any kind of motion about uh, some of the things we've been discussing with Will uh, to put it in the minutes, or will you just put that in the minutes as a discussion? Well, I, I do put it in the minutes as a discussion, but if you want to firm something up, a motion is a good idea. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. What are we going to say is the question. Uh, we make a motion on, on the separate issues we were discussing or? Um, well, one thought it. would be that um, a motion be made for the um, committee um, to work with the assistant harbor master to develop a plan um, regarding um, uh, maintenance and other aspects of the marina. Staffing and, and boat purchase. Yeah. 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 How I think we should sound? do something official about. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, John? I'll move, I'll move on that. that okay. Uh, move that we, I'll write uh, it up just as I said it, if that's acceptable. Can you reread that? Like what you're, what you're proposing? Um, the um, motion would be that the uh, the Marina Committee will work with the Assistant Harbor Master to develop a working plan to assist with um, um, maintenance, boat purchase, and um, other aspects Staffing. of the Marina operation. How is that? I think we should call him the Acting Harbor Master. Okay. Are you acting Harbor Master yet, Will, or are you still assistant? I'm still assistant. Uh, I, think. And I asked Dan Hort that question, and his response was Michael Flanagan is still the Harbor Master. Okay. Here. Cleared it up. So then we should say assistant, like you said. Okay. Um, anything else added to that? Okay, uh, okay. John, you made a motion? Yeah, I made a motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? I'll second. Walter seconds. Okay, any discussion? 
Okay, uh, all in favor? I'm Aye. looking at all of you, raise your hands. Uh, Martha, flip. Okay, it is a unanimous vote. All right, and uh, anything else? Yeah, I, I was gonna mention what Will brought up regarding the courtesy doc and uh, raising the fees. Is that something we could uh, uh, make a motion on? Because I think it's a great, I think it's very necessary. Um, I think we got to wait till we get more water in there to really raise any fees. Eh, I mean, I, I granted, I had there is some self interest involved. When I'm on a mooring, I I rely on that to pick up charters, and I often can't because people are tied up there all afternoon. And um, seems to me they should be paying more for the privilege. So I, I think right. that any any raising of fee. Um, would take a while to do because you would have to hold the public hearing and go oh. before the select board. And then uh, then you could have it approved to raise the fee. So I think anything we did now wouldn't take place until probably the end of the summer anyway. Gotcha. And, and they read just, next year would be, you know, even just the would, federal part. Yeah, that would be part of a package that we would address next year, I would think. <clears throat> I, I think coming with dredging, a, a lot of fees should change, and, and I hope to work with you guys on that uh, in the future, probably this fall, once we, you know, see the boats coming in, the, the barges coming in, that we want to be ready to adjust our fees to that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we also do have a responsibility to the taxpayers to, um, you know, keep our fees up in order to keep asking for money. If we're going to ask for money, you know, we need to be appropriately charging people for things. So I think once this does start to happen, I think we all need to revisit the fees. And I hope to do that with you guys. Once we see that barge in here, I think that's a good time to start uh, revisiting fees for the Harbor. That makes well, sense. well, I've noticed that um, there are several empty slips this summer, have some people declined to use their slip? We're kind of wondering that. Um, most people, pretty much all people have paid for their slips. They're, they're all paid for, they're all spoken for. Um, some people have uh, said that they weren't gonna be in early. Some people have said they weren't gonna be in at all. Not many have said that they weren't gonna be in at all. Right now we're going through a process trying to call all the empty ones. I know there's a, a couple that we've had um, that we have offered to current slip holders with handicap uh, dispositions. Um, like particularly the, like let's say the one that um, John Wolf had last year, that we've offered to two separate people with Parkinson's disease um, in hopes to give them a better boating experience for the last couple of years of their life. Um, and boating, boating uh, use, um, and they they've been called on that. Now that we know, we're, we're kind of getting a feel of what's what and who's where. I know the marine companies were delayed in getting all the boats out. Um, now that we're seeing what's kind of situating where a couple boats have sold, I know that in the bigger boat section. So we got a couple empty. They're looking for boats, but they're currently empty no one's really committing on that they're not going to be there. Most of the ones that aren't, we're filling with the appropriate size vessel. Um, there, are, there are a couple more here and there that we've been trying to raise the people and find out what their intentions are, even though they've already paid for their slip, so that we could rent them out as transients. Uh-huh. Anybody else? Have any exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. This actually gets to a question I had, uh, Will, although I don't know if this is the appropriate place to ask it, but now, now I have some understanding of why I, why we don't know if I'm going to get that spot yet, because um, I'm getting ready to get in, and I just wondered um, when I'm... Yeah, what? exactly, and, and that's one of the reasons I, I raised that, John, was because it was offered to two separate slip holders um, that, uh, so... The first guy in that slip, uh, you know, is handicapped already. 
and it's it's kind of a really good setup for a handicapped person. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, so we, you know, what happened was um, a couple people called this spring um, and and stated, um, <laughs> you know, what their distress was, and I'm trying to. They they are already slip holders too, which does help, but I'm trying to give them. Um, a little bit better usage spot than what they currently have to fit the needs of their handicap. Um, yeah. Whether they're going to take it or not, I've made one do by switching around a couple boats and bringing it over. And I did a second call to the, the other uh, gentleman on Monday, um, waiting to hear back from him to find out if he would like that or if what he has is working for him because that was also his wife that raised the question for him uh, knowing his current status so i did move a couple people around already to kind of free up one spot um, and that's just in a need to kind of get some sort of uh, disability type spots you know, or ease of use for, you know, a disabled type client. Anything else? One thing under um, future concerns that I want to look at is more boat racks, more kayak racks and things like that around town. Um, we get a lot of calls for them, uh, okay. especially like in the Blackfish Creek area where the conservation one is the only one, um, you know, uh, with people dragging their boats up, you know, obviously we allow people with moorings to use whatever they want as a tender. I mean, as long as it meets the specs, right? Uh, canoe, kayak, um, dinghy. Um, if we had racks, more racks for that purpose, I think that would lead to a better organized system than just kind of pulling them up in the beach grass and kind of destroying what's there. I'd like to look at that in the future. The, the, uh, Conservation Trust had some down Old Wharf, but they pulled them out for some reason. I don't know why they did that. Probably made out of pressure treated wood. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning was, but there, there were a bunch down there and then they, they, they got rid of them. So, you know, they might be somebody to talk to at some point because they, they have holdings all over town. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their, their rack system's kind of been a little uh, different than the rest of town. I'd okay. like to have one more managed by us for our users, um, whether it be, you know, anywhere on some kind of town land, uh, maybe even in front of that one that we could assign uh, our users to have a space. That's Anything? gonna happen. That's, yeah. Flip? Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a pretty lengthy discussion with a lot of different people. But there's a lot but, uh, of kayaks around. Yeah, just the whole, uh, you know, landowner usage and the Conservation Commission. And there's, it's endless of uh, up landholders. But it's crazy. So I mean, yeah, that's a that's something that does yeah. make sense because you can utilize space better by having it racked. That's a wintertime. Uh, that's a wintertime project for sure. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's going to be a big discussion. Anything else, John? John? <laughs> Can't hear you, John. John, you're muted. Yeah, I, I didn't do that. Uh, I, I, I can hear you now. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I went offline for some reason. There's something happened to my internet, but uh, I'm back. So I, sorry, Will, I lost the last part of what you were saying there, but I understand about, uh, I, well, you're on to something else now, so we can come back to that. But. Okay, um, it's looking four weeks is August the 5th. How does that set with your calendars? It's okay to me. Yeah. Be all right with me. Okay. Looks okay with me. Flip. I'm looking at mine. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Yeah. Dave. Um, just give me two seconds. August the 5th. 
Yeah, no problem. Okay. It is 8.20. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make uh, a motion there. Dave, and who will second? second? I will. I'll second. Martha? Okay. Thank you, everybody. And a big thank you to you, Courtney. We very much appreciate your help. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> thank yes, you. Courtney. Thank you. Thank have you. Have a good night, everybody. Take you care. Too. Enjoy. All right. All right. All right. All right. Over now, boys.